Good evening, folks. You wouldn't think that figuring out the direction of a kinetic frictional force would be all that tough to do. And in some instances, it's not. Some instances, on the other hand, it can be a little dicey. This video is going to talk about both of those situations. Enjoy. So here we have my rather theatrical opening slide. When you're talking about kinetic friction, you're usually talking about one stationary surface, a second body that's moving over that surface, and in that case, the direction of the frictional force is always going to be opposite the direction of the motion. When it gets dicey is when you get into a situation in which both of the bodies are accelerating separately. So here we have that situation. Truck is going to accelerate to the right, the box, which is sitting freely on the bed of the truck, is going to end up breaking loose and it's going to end up moving in some way, shape, or form. Its acceleration isn't going to be the acceleration of the trucks. And the question is, what is its acceleration going to be? So most people, when they run into a problem like this, and you ask them the direction of the frictional force on the, on the uh, box, they will tell you they think the frictional force is in that direction. They think it's back toward the man. And I think the reason why they think that is because relative to the bed, the box will tend to slide in the direction of the fixed man. So if I were to do a little animation of that, this is what it's going to look like. And at some point in time, the box is going to end up having motivated itself across, and it's going to run into the guy. So why do people think that the frictional force is in this direction? Well, they could be thinking all sorts of things. They may very well think that because the body, the, the box is actually accelerating towards the guy, uh, there must be a force in that direction, and they think that it's friction. This is actually wrong-headed in the sense that, yes, the box is accelerating this way relative to the truck bed, but the truck bed is accelerating to the right, which means that you're, you're looking at what the box is doing relative to an accelerated frame of reference. Newton's laws don't work in accelerated frames of reference. Newton's laws work in inertial frames of reference. So what we really need to do is to set up a fixed frame of reference, like, for instance, a rope that's just hanging down relative to the ground, look to see what the box is doing relative to that. Another possibility is that people may very well realize that, in fact, the truck is accelerating this way, and because that's the case, they think the frictional force is in the opposite direction. But that doesn't make any sense if you think about it, because if the truck was accelerating this way, you you would expect the truck bed would drag the box along with it. it. may not drag it at the same acceleration as the truck, but it would still move in that direction. In any case, what we need to do is to set up some kind of fixed frame of reference and analyze the motion of the box relative to that fixed frame. So here we are back to where we started. And here I've identified a fixed frame of reference, just a line, I've identified where the box is and where the, where the bed is relative to that line. I've identified the distance between the man and the box just for reference sake. And now we're going to do an animation to see what's going to end up happening to the box relative to the man, the line, and the bed as this force pulls the bed to the right. And here we are. The box is now basically on top of the man. The man has moved with the truck to the right relative to our fixed frame, but so is the box, which means the box has actually accelerated to the right along with the truck. The truck bed has, in fact, dragged the box along with it, not at the same acceleration as the truck excel, but nevertheless to the right. That means there has to be a force that was motivating the box to the right, and in fact that force is kinetic friction. In short, this is the free body diagram that you would have to that you could draw if you were trying to identify the forces acting on the box. Here is the static frictional force. If it was static friction that was acting, or if it was kinetic friction that the box was sliding, this would be a kinetic frictional force. 
The obvious problem is, is that if you ever run into a problem like this on a test, you're not going to have that video to be able to see that, oh yes, I have the fixed frame and the body moves this way relative to the fixed frame, etc. You're going to have to be able to look at the situation and decide for yourself what direction the frictional force is going to be on this body. And so what are the cues that are going to allow you to do that? Probably the most obvious cue is the fact that if you just think about it, if the truck goes off to the right, you know or you would expect that the bed would, would drag the box along with it, which means that it's going to accelerate to the right, which means you would expect that there would be a kinetic frictional force to the right. The second option is a little more subtle and a little more elegant as far as I'm concerned. If the mass is moving to the right relative to the bed, there must be a frictional force in the opposite direction of the slide relative to the bed. So if the box is sliding to the left relative to the bed, there must be a frictional force to the right on the box. Tricky, eh? In either case, you would hopefully have concluded that this would have been the free body diagram acting on the box when it was sliding with kinetic friction being to the right. And with that, the fat lady sings. <laughs>